Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and I wanted to give a review um, for my specific uh, situation with over-the-air antenna, my setup, uh, the best setup I've come up with, and uh, just show you some of the uh, pieces that I'm using. It's it, Making videos like this is always so difficult because everyone's situation is different. But uh, to make uh, probably a short story long, uh, for 10 years now, we got rid of cable. And uh, over the years, I think that's really been a blessing in disguise. Uh, I have Sling now, and this is like very, very few stations are even worth watching. But uh, so that's a big savings in the, with the prices of everything going up, including those streaming uh, options. I would assume that the price of cable is very high right now. So to me, it's well worth spending probably less than one cable bill to get quality antenna, the whole quality setup. And then if you get a good enough one, you probably can just set it up there and not have to change it. So I had used uh, basically one of those all-in-one ones on a, it was a hand rotor. It was just like a, I think it was a Phillips. And that one worked okay. It had nice long rabbit ears so you could still get uh, the VHF stations. And then I used a RCA flat panel and used that for many years. It worked in the bedroom and I had a separate antenna in the living room, which was spotty at best to get a few stations and especially throughout the year. It would come and go, I'd have to keep moving it and I'd buy one a little better. Usually you'd find one like, you know, $50 one on clearance for five or 10, get that, have another amplifier, try it. And then I saw the antenna man on YouTube. So I'm pretty sure anyone that looks up anything on YouTube, that's probably the go-to channel. So I knew enough about antennas, but I didn't know the specifics. And someone that actually installs them knows what they're talking about. It seemed the focus was pretty much no matter what, you just need to get the best antenna you can for your situation. And uh, being in an apartment, I don't want to buy a giant one. I can't put anything outside. And again, I guess it's uh, an arguable point if you wanted to put it out your window, but I don't even want one out there because if you would have to adjust it, it's just going to be uh, more worn out from the weather. So what I did was end up getting the Clearstream Max 5 or Max V, you're not sure what that is, but I made a video on it a year ago, a year and a half ago. It's been working well. Uh, I don't think we've ever lost any channels. There might be some times where one's a little bit breaking up from interference, but it's nothing where it just didn't work. And the main thing I learned was instead of using two separate antennas and one in a room that doesn't work, is I just use both off the bedroom, this one's in the bedroom, and just have a powered amplified splitter and run the other cable out to the uh, living room, and that's been working perfectly. So it really was just the difference of changing my setup up, buying better equipment, and having stuff that could power, and you know, splitting that signal, but keeping everything amplified, and I haven't had any problems since. Now at $59, I believe this is like at least $10 cheaper than when I first bought it. There's also, if you really get into it, you can get the 4. I think there's the 4V, which had the metal cage behind it. Probably adds a little bit more than there's, but for convenience sake and looks, the 4 Max would probably be better. You have the, uh, some of the 4Vs had the uh, VHF antenna like this one does, but I don't find this works very good. I have one, two VHF stations, one's low powered PBS, which I can't pick up, which I don't really care for. And I think you can get that uh, PBS streaming on the internet anyway. And then the other is a uh, CW, which is really nothing on there I watch either. So I could kind of pick it up sometimes, but I don't think I can anymore, but I don't really care. I get all the other UF UHF stations, which is fine. So this is the main thing. Using this antenna really fixed pretty much everything. And then I did notice this is the amplifier that came with my RCA flat panel antenna for about 10 years now that I've been using. And every time I've changed an antenna, which I think was pretty much just those two, I always kept using this amplifier. And if even with the uh, clear stream, if I don't use it, it definitely will like start to show interference and it won't pick up all the same stations. So I'm not sure if how I have it going probably six to 10 foot RG6 cable from the clear stream to this. So I'm not sure if it's kind of acting like a preamp the way I'm using it, 
and then it's uh, obviously powered, so it has to be plugged in. Then that one just goes to a short, maybe six foot cable, and it goes into the amplified splitter, which is the next thing I'll talk about. And then that just goes into a six foot, into the TV in the, in the bedroom, and then the other ones, I don't know, probably at least a 50 foot, if not longer, cable that's coupled. And then, so there is like one break in it, and that goes out into the living room. So it's not probably the cleanest setup, but it, it's been working for me better than anything else, better than two separate antennas. So this, I don't know, again, you can see you can't buy this um, amplifier. There's WineGuard, there's a Channel Master. There are other, there are pre-amplifiers, but there's other ones you could buy. And then there's plenty of cheap on ones. I think I have an on one to replace an old amp that broke on the, when I was using two separate antennas. So you can definitely get other amplifiers. This is just the one I'm using. Again, is it arguable whether you should need one or not? But for me, I know if I unplug the power to this, it won't work as good. If I unplug the power to the um, powered splitter, it won't work as good. So this is just my situation. You can shop around if you want to add an amp or just not don't even want to use one. And then as far as Channel Master goes, I bought my splitter on eBay. And they Channel Master actually has their own uh, page, seller page. And I'm not sure if some of the things are open box or refurbished, but they're way cheaper. So you, I'd recommend checking eBay first. And I'm sure there are people that either have stuff like this and it doesn't work or they upgrade or just exclusively stream. And they probably would sell it cheap. So this is a bit overpriced. Uh, I'm using a two port because I'm using a two TVs with this. So you can get four, eight, or just if you needed one powered uh, thing, I guess for a long run cable. I find that this works really well. So that's the three pivotal pieces to this puzzle that I'm using. And then RG6, some of it's just old RG6 that we had forever. And then some, when I ran, I needed to extend to go from this to the cable that already goes to the living room TV. And I bought just a cheap Walmart RG6, but it all works. And there's, I'm not paying more for like a quad shield or like those even beefier ones. But the, for the price of it, it's definitely better than I think the RG59. So RG6 is the way to go. It's affordable and it works. So just go ahead with that. I don't think there's really a difference in brands. Just get whatever's new and you shouldn't have any problems there. Um, so as far as my setup, uh, you can see the RCA flat panel. I think I've had probably for eight or nine years. It was actually $60 when I bought it from Walmart that long ago. But it came with that amplifier that I still use. Uh, at this point... I think you, I've seen them like maybe even on clearance for like five or 10, but it was the best uh, antenna I had and it uh, held up well. And uh, this one actually works j really good just right next to it. I tried facing the window, in the window, other parts, but this is the uh, best spot for it. And what I did was I'm just using double-sided tape and then I added some uh, little stoppers just to have a little bit of, I guess you'd call that fulcrum or something. So the weight of the antenna kind of stays balanced down this way, but it's, that way I didn't have to pound any nails in, crack the drywall. It's been holding for a year. So if it was going to fall on my computer and destroy everything, it would probably happen by now. And then for me, there's the RCA amplifier, which kind of be nice to get in there and to dust, but you can see that's how long I've had that. I've never had to move it. I would just connect my other antennas to that. But I still need it if I unplug it. it uh, I will get some interference. It's not as good as uh, with the uh, that amplifier. And then basically when I get down to here to where I keep my junk, including my uh, trusty 1990s almanac, this is, I uh, just hung that with, I think, uh, just some twist ties and did a little cable management so I didn't have, because I don't think you could get much of a shorter run for those unless you made your own custom uh, uh, cable. I think I used the RG6 that came with the Channel Master, but that's uh, that made a difference too. I went with that first, and it cleaned up the picture a little bit, but to me it really just came down to getting a better antenna. So uh, this was helpful with the older antenna. I really wouldn't have needed it until I decided to... Um, run both TVs off one antenna. 
then I needed this, so it helped. But it was really came down to the uh, clear stream antenna was really the main piece to the puzzle. But uh, that's what I'm working with there. And I just wanted to show basically, it's not much different than the first video I made when I first uh, installed this antenna. Uh, I haven't done a scan in a while. Uh, I liked LG, the way they have a channel station manager. Uh, you can fine tune it. I had a Samsung, which was the worst. I don't think you had the option to hide stations like here. Uh, you can go through. So this is what I pick up. I'm missing uh, PBS, channel 13. Uh, channel 19 is the CW. I used to be able to pick it up. I must not have been able to get it on my last scan. It's a VHF station. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I hardly even watch any of this stuff, really. Uh, these were new stations that were added. So those are ones if they still, I never was able to pick them up before. So maybe that's why it doesn't look like those are coming in now, but I'm not crying about it. But you can see, <clears throat> you can see here that um, mostly everything else Aside from the, again, that 39, which is one of those, I didn't even know I had that until the last time whenever I did a scan was, but enough of everything is coming in. And I like showing it like that compared to this, which might get copyright, but one thing of TCL, it's basically one of the stations I do watch is Ion. It's like the uh, Law and Order and Chicago PD station. I do like their guide. Uh, you have to be connected to the internet i think to pull all this stuff in there is a separate like if you weren't connected i think it'll still tell you most of this but you don't get the uh picture up top and i don't i think you still get the uh uh description of the show i don't think you get all these stations at once you have to uh like tune to each one before it'll pull in that data so when you're connected to the internet it's a little bit better But you can see everything here picks up. Takes a little while to tune in to each station. I'm just using the uh, built-in TCL Roku tuner. Uh, obviously, you could run through a DVR if you were more picky about it. But And one thing I mentioned, I don't know if all TCL TVs, but at least the 6 Series from 2019, if you add a hard drive, you can't change the station or change the input but it'll record up to 90 minutes of the uh, program if you don't mess with it. So to me, it was a no-brainer. Instead of spending hundreds, possibly, for a better DVR with this, all I needed to do was I had an old 80 gigabyte PS3 hard drive. 80's way too small to use basically for anything, but 80's more than enough to record uh, 90 minutes of TV, probably 720p or such. So it, it also gives you the ability to pause it and then you can rewind. But again, if you change a the station, then you'll lose that or the input. But it's just a neat feature if you have a TCL TV, just add a cheap hard drive, get an enclosure if you don't have an external one, and then there you go. You got 90 minutes of DVR, picky. Again, you can't pick, you have to leave it tuned to that station for that uh, duration. But it's, it's a, a nice feature, I don't mind it at all. Uh, so to me, uh, not watching nearly as much TV as I used to, um, I think it, when I bought it, it was $70 for the antenna, about 30 for that uh, Channel Master amplifier, and then I had the uh, other one, the RCA one, I think that was, uh, I think amplifiers like that, your cheap ons and stuff, about 15 So you're just a little over $100, $120, that's probably most people's cable packages, bare minimum, every month. Well worth it. I get all these stations, and more than I'll watch because I don't watch them that much. But to me, it's enough. And then on top, I supplement it with Sling TV, and then you have YouTube, and then you have so many more free content providers like Peacock and Tubi. There should be enough now at this point. Uh, a lot of people are raising their prices with Sling and other... Uh, online uh, streaming services, but I, th I think that's just a good solid to have is uh, over good over the air. Just gotta put a little money in it and maybe do some research to get pick up something. But aside from that, 
only addition I might make, I don't really want to get a new TV anytime soon, but would be something of ATSC 3.0. Uh, and I'm in the Pittsburgh market. I think they're one of the few markets that is up and running. I don't know all the stations that they have right now, but I know that they're, they're one of the ones that want to uh, broadcast in this. So that would change everything, kind of like the repack. I think everything will be on different frequencies. So hopefully it would all work out. But aside from that, I'm really happy with this. If for uh, channels the way they are, it picks them up just fine. And... Uh, I would recommend that's my setup and it's a good price. So hopefully that can answer some questions or give you a template for what you could try in your situation. It's definitely worth it if you wanna get rid of cable or if you don't have TV and you just wanna spend the least amount of money to have uh, something. So uh, if I could help in the comments, I will. And I have some other videos of some of these products I've done in the past. Just wanted to give an update and show that that's all been working as good as I've ever had anything set up. So thanks for watching and you'll see me in the next one. Have a good one.